What's up, fam? This is Silky Smooth. Another episode of the Smooth Experience. And uh, this is a cool channel where it's just anything that interests me comes to mind, you know? If I got a new favorite color, I might talk to you about it. If I got a new favorite coin, I'm definitely going to talk to you about it because right now I'm into cryptos. And I'm just going to come at you guys tonight with a little bit of good crypto news. Just because things are changing up. They're constantly changing up in the game. And it's good for us to know. Stay up to date. Stay abreast of the knowledge. So first of all, this is pretty interesting. What we got coming here tonight is InsideBitcoins.com is telling us that Bitcoin will not become legal in India without monitoring. So it's pretty interesting how these guys are saying that, you know, there might be some support in India for Bitcoin, which is going to be huge because um, recently I might have I might have included this in my video. I might have not, but Google's releasing a currency in India called Tez, Google Tez, and basically the Google Tez, um, the Google Tez currency is something that is trying to compete so let's see here boom yeah here it is it means fast in Hindi and basically what it is is it's gonna perform funds transfers it's where the sender doesn't need the bank details of the receiver and the funds transfer happens between two virtual payment addresses Key differences between two UPI and other key methods of payments are described here, but it's used by 50 Indian banks. So, pretty interesting because Google Tez is trying to come out with their own thing. And then India is already starting to see, you know, kind of like an open mind towards cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. But they're saying that the only way this is going to be open here is if we monitor it. And, you know, I don't know how I feel about this. You know, because I, I really, really want to believe that cryptocurrencies are going to kind of like force people into taking accountability for their own actions. And, you know, when that happens, that's going to allow us to not need so much monitoring. And besides that, I also believe that we're all adults here, you know. And if you're not able to end up using your Bitcoin in a way that's responsible or in a way that's helping out the planet then okay maybe maybe you do need to be monitored but i don't think all of us need to be monitored as a standard so it's just something that i wanted to to raise awareness to uh, just because this is this is going to be something that's changing the world you know and there you're going to read stories about people that are going to trash the name of bitcoin that are going to do bad things with bitcoin you're going to see people that have been paid to do bad things with Bitcoin. And that's just to end up trying to get it regulated is usually what I see. I see a lot of these governments, they're going to start getting lobbied by a lot of these banks. They're going to get They're going to start to have to change their laws according to the bank's will unless these governments are open-minded. And, you know, India is kind of... It's kind of uh, looking like it might end up being open-minded to it, just according to an economist. So, next, what's going on now? Um, the U.S. wants to uh, wants Bitcoin operators to apply for big bank status. So this is pretty interesting because, yeah, I think that people that are operating with Bitcoin are. This is kind of like another way of lobbying in the US where they're gonna say alright fine you know if we can't call Bitcoin a fraud and then purchase a whole bunch of it then we want people that are using Bitcoin to apply for bank status and that might be the way that they'll end up being able to make it illegal or regulate it or put fear into people so they don't want to use it and okay let's just see because it's one of many different proposals that are coming out right now and we're gonna see because uh, the way I foresee that is that like if Bitcoin operators apply for bank status, then that means that we would have to abide by all bank rules. So ultimately, no, I'm sorry, because 
this is a cryptocurrency that's bigger it transcends banks it's something that again you're going to see more of these strategies coming at bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in ways that they're going to try to regulate it uh, there's going to be other ways where you're going to see certain blockchains that are going to be government approved because their apis allow for the government to monitor every little transaction and see every little thing that's happening so you may see that um, you may see some ways that the irs is going to make some statements soon and the irs is an entity that definitely strikes fear in a lot of people and i just want people to end up trying to remember that it's up to us to uphold this currency to uphold all these currencies it's always been up to us it's just some people use it irresponsibly and other people want to control everybody and a lot of times they say oh we have to monitor them to protect them from themselves and things like that but you know I'm good I'm good with my own money and I'm good with being able to spend it the way I want it and I don't need to ask anybody if I can do that and I don't need to apply for bank status in order for me to be using my Bitcoin no thank you I've been doing it just fine the whole time I'm gonna continue to do it for for until I need to uh, and I'm gonna continue to do it as long as I need to and we'll just see how all this evolves because you know everything changes all right next Bitcoin debit card Yrex this is pretty cool Yrex is a um, it is a card that people get to use to end up like usually just cashing out their funds but now Yrex has become open-minded towards the Dash cryptocurrency so you know with this Dash is something that's huge. If you end up going over to CoinMarketCap, you'll see that Dash is one of the top, like it's the number six cryptocurrency. It's certainly at a discount right now. And yeah, with all of the money behind it, it definitely makes sense that they're gonna end up having a debit card behind it. But what I think is pretty interesting is that the one of the purposes of Dash is anonymity. And by linking a debit card to this you're effectively removing the anonymity and that may be something that um, regulators or governments are going to require in the future so let's be aware of this let's try to figure out ways to uphold these coins in ways that we may not need this that we that we won't see these regulators having to step in and being like look we have to take responsibility for all you people you cannot spend your money without us telling you how to do it and without us tracking you. So uh, it's just something that's interesting. And I think Yrex is awesome because they're opening their minds up to Dash. But I just want people to remember what Dash is about. Next, um, blockchain healthcare. This is pretty interesting. So the CDC, Center of Disease Control um, and Prevention, it's pretty much... It says, on the cusp of leveraging blockchain technology to tackle the challenge of data management. Now, this is a beautiful way of using blockchain technology. So, speaking um, to technology review, um, public health and blockchain really do belong together. So, this is a representative from the CDC saying this. And this is pretty interesting. There is going to, everything is, has a double-edged sword, you know. So, there's going to always be a give and a take to everything. So the good part is, is that, actually we'll start off with the bad part. The bad part about blockchain healthcare is that it's going to be less private for people's health information to not be traced back to them. We're going to, you know, definitely, I predict, you know, that all this, all this good stuff could be wrong and I'm, I welcome being wrong and it's definitely okay. Leave a comment. Let's start a, con let's start a conversation, you know, I'm not afraid of it. But blockchain healthcare is definitely going to make people's diseases more public. Um, it's not going to necessarily tie it to the people in the beginning, but as it evolves over time, they're going. If we allow this, we're going to allow it even further and further and further to where every little thing that you do is going to be put onto a blockchain. Every pill you take, every um, checkup that you have at a doctor may be put on a blockchain 
you know, just to protect your health. And it's because at that point, we may see that as a necessity. So that's the, that's the that in my opinion, may be the downfall. The, the benefit of this, though, is that there are diseases out there right now that we have no idea how to cure. And, it, and we also know that it's going to take years and years and years to try to take any type of research that's going to make like any like dent in the evolution of a cure for some of these diseases. And by putting these onto a blockchain, it's going to allow all kinds of people from around the world to work on these diseases and evolve them at a much faster rate. Plus, we'll be able to dedicate computing power to um, some of, we'll be able to dedicate computing power to some of these diseases. Let me show you something that's pretty cool. This is something that I want people to understand that's really, it's beautiful. It's called Cloudfold Mining. And Cloudfold Mining is something that um, there was a necessity for. There was a necessity for data to be mined at a much, much faster rate. And they wanted to identify patterns deep within people's DNA in order to understand diseases. And so what they understood was that by mining and by putting together a whole bunch of CPUs, I can't find an article right now, but look this up. And, you know, there's many different explanations on this, but this is just my current understanding. And that's... Um, in order to, by by putting a whole bunch of CPUs together and creating a blockchain and by creating a ledger of all these CPUs trying to go after data deep within people's DNA they would be able to find advancements to certain proteins within DNA that we've never been able to find before man look at this this is getting me like I got to find something on this I think I watched like some really cool um, videos on this before. Okay, yeah, check this out, cloud folding. So I participate in this, and if you guys are interested in this, you know I could definitely show you some of this. But what's very cool about cloud folding is that. It's helping people get better very fast. And look at this. This is all about the same stuff that I'm into. I'm into this EOBot. This is cool, but EOBot's being affected right now by China. I got an email from them the other day. They were like, oh man, because of what China's got going on, we don't know what's going to happen with EOBot. So anyways, just look at cloud folding. It's something that's very, very beautiful. And it's something that I could definitely see um, uh, blockchain healthcare benefiting from. Next, South Africans love Bitcoin. This is something that's pretty beautiful because I've been reading about um, some, look at this, I like this. I've been reading about some people in South Africa and actually in other places in Africa that have been using micro loans and micro loan technology. And guys, listen to this. If you're watching this from a first world country, it's, it's time to take notes because there are people in second and third world countries that are getting microloans for $15. And they're being told that you need to um, pay that $15 back in seven days. And these people go out and they take this $15 and they multiply it into $150 just because they've now been given the opportunity to do so. Whereas, here in first world countries, I see people walking past pennies on the ground. I see people throwing pennies in the trash. I know if some of you people around the world are watching this, how weird that sounds. But it's just because over here, we've been given so much opportunity that sometimes we don't know what to do with it. And I can be the first to admit it. And so what I'm trying to do right now is take every opportunity that comes to me. And yeah, it's something to definitely look at. Because there are people in other countries that are making their money look so good that it would, should make us feel bad in some of these big countries and be like, you know, all right, we can do some things. 
we could do some things for people in Puerto Rico. Actually, I'm not even going to go off on that right now. But basically, yeah, there's a lot of things that could be happening right now with our blockchain technology. Follow me on Twitter because I like, um, I also speak about some of this stuff and about how we could try to, you know, benefit people around the world with this because it's fast money and it's still not regulated. It's the Wild West, baby. Pew, pew. Let that happen. All right, next and last, um, bank issued Bitcoin debit cards. So this is something that I think is pretty interesting that, you know, I'm not able to see the whole article, but what's pretty interesting is that there is um, some talk at banks where they're trying to issue Bitcoin debit cards. And in my opinion, that may just be another means of trying to track people and trying to get people to comply with banking demands. And what's so interesting is that I'm trying to figure out why banks would issue Bitcoin debit cards if other banks are calling it a fraud. So we're clearly fragmented with our idea of what cryptocurrencies are yet. And, and to be honest, I'll just end the video with this. Here's our homework. Is it? Is it? late enough in the game to be even calling shots like Bitcoin is fraud or Bitcoin is completely good. I think we should be asking ourselves like, is it is it really so early in the stages of these cryptocurrencies that we just need to be asking ourselves, should we even consider that yet? Let's kind of play and see how these things evolve, see how these things play out because there have been some beautiful ICOs that have already come to completion that have allowed us to evolve this planet in ways that fiat currencies could have never done so. And it's because governments form opinions, whether they want to, whether they want to or not, they do. And oftentimes they'll form their opinions of their people and of their people's wills in an ideal world and in other places they don't and when a whole country forms an opinion it's hard for that country to interface with other countries that don't have the same opinion and that means that your money won't work in that other country and it's just plain and simple guys and what what's so interesting about bitcoin is that you don't have to worry about that because I've got to say right now that there's some things that are happening where the opinion of the government of, of the American people is not exactly in alignment with my opinion. And I want to be able to make sure that I can use a currency that doesn't have to speak for that government. And if I use dollars right now, I'm saying that I'm speaking for that government and I want them involved in all of my transactions. But I also have an alternative out there. And that alternative is something that we all just contribute to with our CPUs, baby. It doesn't matter if my government is cool with your government. It doesn't matter if they have an opinion, what their opinion is. I can still fund people in other places. I can still fund Puerto Rico, even if, even if, my government says that they've already done enough. I can go past that, baby. And I can say, you know, that's cool. Y'all think you did enough with the tax dollars and with U.S. dollars. That's cool. I feel I could do more with cryptos. And I just want us to start thinking about that. I just want us to start thinking about how we transcend these things. And about how on this channel before, there have been traders that have been making mainstream news in their country because they continue to trade these pioneering and revolutionary currencies. Just think about this. I just got done med meditating and thinking about this. And I was like, what a beautiful time to be alive. So if you like this information, it, whatever website you're watching this on right now, do the things that the website wants you to do, like like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications if you want to know when I'm going to put out new videos as soon as I put it out and as soon as I'm streaming. And that way we can all start to get into conversations together. I'd like to start up a live chat so that that way we can be interacting with each other. So if you get value out of this, if you know the people that get value out of this, um, 
share this with them. Let them know that, th that this is something that's beautiful. This is something that's revolutionary. This is something that should be firing us up right now. Uh, because I foresee that the world's resources, I foresee everything being able to change through this right here. And I'll just end off with saying, um, if you also like the content, you could support these streams because I'm starting to put in the descriptions of these channels um, donation links. If you donate, send me a message. You know, let me know that you donated so I can shout you out. But yeah, uh, other than that, here's what I just want to say is that like, think about how cryptocurrencies are going to empower people because ultimately what currency is, is it's an external representation of internal value. So when you guys look at different markets, you guys see in a very like, a metaphysical way it's a way that transcends the physical that you can see people's physical representation of what they value here they value Bitcoin the most they value ethereum next they value ripple next they value all this stuff in order and it's because of the way that these coins work so what I'm trying to say is think about that Cryptocurrencies and all currencies, even fiat currencies, are an external representation of a person's internal value. And it is certainly not all of a person's internal value. Because I certainly have way more value than what I put into cryptocurrencies. But it's just something to think about. Um, that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one. Silky Smooth.